welcome to Harness Your Intuitive Superpowers, where you learn energy secrets that busy professionals need in order to thrive beyond mediocrity and embody extraordinary success. I'm your host, Dr. Amira Hall, and today I'm so excited to bring to you my guest, Lata J. Lata is a spiritual manifestation coach, and she blends modern knowledge of science with the traditional wisdom that she has learned from the ancients and her own cultural background. She integrates what she's learned through life and various healing modalities in her practice, and she's helped thousands of clients to shift their perspective to create and manifest happier lives. Lata's passionate about guiding clients through lifestyle and mindset shifts to transform their lives into having more purpose, more abundance, more joy and success in their life. When Lata's not working, she is a busy mom of three little ones, and she has got a half a million followers on TikTok. She is a consummate professional, always seeking to create balance and harmony and have joy and success in her life. She's walking her talk, She's persistently engaging with a beginner's mindset that I find incredibly refreshing and empowering. So I'm fascinated with this incredible woman. So let's welcome Lata J. Welcome, Lata. Thank you so much for having me. It's really my honor. And I was excited because I wanted to hear a little bit about that book you published or books that you published. How do we manifest more, Lata? What are the principles of manifesting more of what we want and less of what we don't want? Okay, let's jump into it. So the book that I wrote, I've written two books. One is the Law of Attraction Manifestation Journal, which is a bestseller. And the second one, the most recent one is all about shadow work. It's a shadow work journal of her self-love. And it really teaches how to do shadow work. It explains a lot about shadow work and it teaches it in a way that is integrated with self-love. So it's a very gentle approach to shadow work. And I have heard a lot of great feedback from it. So I really encourage people that are curious about what the heck is shadow work, because we hear a lot of that. It's like a very buzz word out yeah. there. Yeah. It's a nice way to say we've got baggage and we have work to do. Yeah. But it's really like looking internally and being an observation of those spaces that darkness, those areas that we feel guilty or shame or regret about, those things that kind of are the root cause of what later expands into triggers, projections, uh, these repetition cycles that we deal with, our limiting beliefs, all of that really stems from our shadows. When we are doing shadow work, we're addressing that right? We're being an observation of that space and it shifts things for us. So one of the biggest things for manifesting is to do shadow work. <laughs> and it's um, not that you have to do shadow work and rid yourself of all shadows. I wish that was possible. It's not really, but really having an idea of your shadows and being in integrating yourself with them really is what's needed. And that allows you to manifest very quickly because it addresses those limiting beliefs, right? And just as we can create anything in our lives, we also create those limits around it. So if we have a limiting belief that, oh, we don't deserve that promotion. Okay. The universe says, okay, you don't deserve that promotion. Don't worry. We won't get it. If we have this limiting belief that says I can never make a million dollars, the universe says, okay, if that's your belief, got you, no problem. Rather, if we're switching that and we're saying, I, I have the belief that I'm going to create this company and it's going to hit a million dollars in revenue this year. And we really are focused and we're in aligned action and we're doing all the things that we need to do, then yes, that's achievable for us. But it all starts with you and it starts with your mindset on what you believe you can and cannot do. And as soon as we declare to the universe, we want something, all of a sudden we'll receive intuitive hits. Oh, now I need to do this. And one thing will lead to the next. It's walking on pebbles in a stream and you'll be guided exactly to where you need to go on the other side. Yeah, absolutely. And it's like, you don't have to worry about how you're going to fully accomplish the gold, right? You don't have to know the whole path. You just have to be in trust and just take those steps, right? Be in aligned action. And it's, it'll get you there. So I appreciate all that you do and the huge following that you've created for yourself and the success with your book. How did this begin, Lata? How did this begin? It's really interesting because I have been a coach for 
a little bit over 12 years, okay. but a lot of the growth that has happened, the success, everything really happened after I blew up on, on TikTok. And that's where a lot of my success has really come through in the past four years or so. And it's been very interesting because people see, wow, you popped up here overnight. And I'm like, I've been doing this for a very long time. Yeah. It wasn't an overnight <laughs> success. You've been building a muscle. Yes, for sure. And it's been such a beautiful kind of journey. I had learned about TikTok from actually a babysitter that we had for one of our kids. And she was like, oh, you should get on TikTok because you're always telling me these really cool facts and things and ideas. And she was like, I've never heard anything like this. You should get on TikTok. And I was like, I knew TikTok as a dancing app. And I was like, I don't dance <laughs> like that. I was like, I'm not going to be doing that on the app. She was like, no, it's different now. Try it. So I started posting some videos and it gained traction. And then it just, it totally blew up. And it's just been like one thing after another that's been coming my way and one blessing and one opportunity. And it's a true testament to that manifestation. I definitely had to, I could almost pinpoint the shifts that had happened in my life so that I could then be publicly acknowledged and seen because for so long I was dealing with the limiting belief that I don't want to be seen. I want to be hidden. I don't want to be publicly known. And it was this thing that I really had to move past because it was the fear of being seen, right? When you're being seen, it's not just that you're being seen by all the people that love you. <laughs> you're being seen by everybody. And there's the comments that are wonderful and loving and encouraging. And there's the other side of things too. And yeah, that, that create shadow unknowns to you, right? And you, yes. it may trigger something within you. I know it's hurtful to put yourself out there, but what I always think of as an energy sensitive, it's all that energy, even if they don't say anything, literally, as I feel this with this experience of interviewing people, sometimes I get all tongue tied and normally I wouldn't, but it's all the energy coming at me. It feels like a tsunami because I'm already, my spirit is anticipating the viewers already watching this. Have, do you ever experience something like that? Oh, all the time, all the time. When I interact with people, when I meet clients in person or on through Zoom or anywhere, I always have this energy exchange that happens. And I've just, I've always had an, a, an ability to read people's energy and just be able to work with it in a very different way. And it's been such a blessing. And once I really truly understood it and how I could use it for the benefit of others, things really shifted for me. Yeah, that's fantastic. I'm very curious. What's your birthday? My birthday is at the end of September. I usually don't announce it publicly. Oh, no, just a bit. So you're actually a Libra. I am. Yeah. So that's fantastic because you're able to keep all of these balls in the air and strive for balance. At least you strive for balance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And I am the epitome of a Libra. I have, I'm a very much, everything that they say about a Libra is right on for me. That's always just how it's been too. It's like very balanced or I'm at one extreme or the other. And my life is very full and busy and it's full of blessings as well. And I think that's also a characteristic of Libras. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. So what do you wish you knew back when you first started your coaching work? I wish that I knew that it was going to be amazing if I just started to be out there in public and that all the things that I maybe felt self-conscious about were all the things that was going to allow me to better connect with people, right? Like I always felt self-conscious about, oh, like I have all of these kids and they're screaming in the background. And so many times I would make a video and yeah, my kids would be screaming in the background or I'd have a baby on my hip or something. And I'm trying to film just this side without the baby showing in the video. And it's just been like, that's what people connect with. They're like, I see your babe. So cute. Whatever the case is. I know that's amazing to me. Yeah. So it's been like such a blessing. A lot of times when we show up in social media, we want to show up in this very highlight reel of your life, polished form. And what I realized is my life doesn't have that. I, ha I have all of these beautiful moments and they're all wonderful, polished or not. And I think that just being authentic and being who you truly are really shifts things. When I stopped trying to be that perfect person that has a wonderfully coordinated house and all of these things, I was able to really like step into who I am as a person, nothing wrong with those beautiful aesthetic houses. I love it. And maybe that's my goal one day, but yeah. right now I have a newborn and a three-year-old and a six-year-old. And you know what? Sometimes it's chaos and there's crayon on the wall and I <laughs> step into embracing that and that just works. I, I just love that attitude. And actually that's the secret in my opinion of having more abundance and having a stronger intuition is not fighting who you are, but mm -hmm. in, instead, like you said, doing the shadow work, embracing who you are and really loving in it and stepping forward, being seen. Absolutely. 
Yeah. So what are some of the unexpected things that have come up since you began your own journey? Let's say shadow work. Some of the unexpected things that you mean, like personally have come up for me? Yeah. I have unexpectedly, last year, actually, unexpectedly, I lost my father. He passed away from cancer very suddenly. And for me, thank you. Something that had come up for me was just, just like, that was the first big loss in my life of someone that was so close to me and my dad were like besties right and because we were both kind of these chaotic Libras at times and he just got me my when I wanted to go and do these random things and venture the world and stuff he'd always be like all right call me kind of thing he'd be like let me know how this goes not that he was encouraging it but he never discouraged it he'd always be very supportive of me so we were very closely bonded so to lose him was a huge shift in my life and unexpectedly there was this beautiful kind of lesson that came from the loss because so many times I work with people who have lost loved ones who have had people cross over who have had these like experiences or helping them through their grief or really doing grounding work but I had the firsthand experience of it and I just it was just such a genuine experience of pain grief loss and coming out of that and just being able to have that experience I think has made me a better coach and person to work with. And also in that experience, very unexpectedly too, I was in the depths of my grief and we knew my father was going to pass the next day. And I just remember all of a sudden I woke up, I was in the same house with him. My sister was in the room with him and I was in the other room. I woke up suddenly and I was just like, what? And I could see these spirits and I, and then I have had this ability to see spirits my whole entire life. So it wasn't anything new to me, but there was three spirits and they were moving away from the house very quickly. And I was just like, what, what is this? It woke me up off guard kind of thing. And I heard my father's voice going, woohoo. And I was like, what, what is this? And I got up and I went to the room and I was like, I said to my sister, I said, Hey, what's going on? Is that okay? And she was like, Oh, what? I woke her up. And she said, I think he just passed. And he had just passed in that moment. And it was just like, it was such an interesting experience yeah. because it almost made me feel like, oh, wow, he's excited. <laughs> and it di- it didn't make me feel like, oh, what is there? I'm so sad. It was like, he's excited. He sees what's on the other side and it's, it's, it's brilliant. Yeah. And I'm so grateful for that moment, but I would have never guessed that was going to happen in a million years. No, you can't predict. In fact, I had a, an estranged relationship with my dad for years and the last five years of his life, we healed that. And I had done my, started doing my shadow work. Anyway, when he died, I was shocked how angry I was and how stuck I was and grief struck and and still so many unanswered questions and thoughts. But so you just never know. I was shocked that happened. I thought we were good. And so I didn't see that coming either. Yeah. So losing a parent, I think, is pretty profound to stepping into who we are and what we're here to do and be able to be more abundant and in our flow. Yeah, it's a profound experience and it's definitely so impactful that I know that the person that I was last year is absolutely not the person I am this year. And it's been a true period of growth and facing a lot of fears that I've never wanted to face before. I can actually share this other story with you. After we got the diagnosis that my father was going to pass, that it was terminal cancer, there wasn't much that people could do to help. We were like floundering because we were just like, what do we do now? And I had kept getting this intuitive hit. Okay, you got to be the leader. You got to step up, be the leader. Got to step up, be the leader. And I was just like, no, I don't want to. Too, this is too much. This is too much. I don't want to. I just want to go into a little burrow and just hide and put my my hands over my ears and say, no, this is not happening. This is not happening. And uh, one day I really got that message. Like, you have to step up. You have to be the leader here. You have to start this. So I said, okay, I have to step up. And that was like when we had processed, we had started the whole process to create a will and all of the stuff that you never want to think about. And no. we had to do it. And I really had to face a lot of fears to do this. And I just remember so distinctly that after we had got the will created through the lawyer, we had to have it notarized. And literally the name of the notary who had stamped it was her last name was fear. <laughs> and I just, wow. I, and I had to laugh. Cause I was like, Oh my gosh, this is like literally me facing my fears in doing this. And she gave me the stamp of approval. And I was like, Oh, wow. Who has a name like that? <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Wow. Yeah. I think I'd change it to fearless. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah. It's funny. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So losing a parent can really change the course of where we're at. And so do you think that triggered your move? 
Oh yeah. A hundred percent. Absolutely. 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 So, so there's all these dominoes falling, right. In a whole new direction being set. Yeah. When we decided to come and live on our farm, it's a a quaint little farm. We have, it's just like a little cottage that fits perfectly for my family. And it's just been me and my husband and my two kids. But after my father died, my mom is widowed and I really wanted her to come and live with us. And we just didn't have the room here on our little cottage in our farm. And she also didn't really like to be this rural. And then after, right before he was, my father was going to pass, he always would tell me, even as his cognition was going in and out, right. he'd always be like, I'm so grateful for my three kids. I love them so much, my three kids. And for whatever reason, it just imprinted in my mind, just man, his three kids. And I just had this conversation with my husband a few months after he had passed. I said, Hey, what if we had three kids? How would this be for us? And then we had decided that, okay, yeah, we're going to, we're going to have another child. And I, it would not have happened had my father not passed away. Oh, isn't was like, that beautiful? It was yeah. his like love and dedication, even in the last moments of his life, that it was like the three of us, the three of us, it just really stuck with me. Also something else I noticed that when we were going through all the stress as a family, me and my siblings would fight, but it would never be all three of us fighting each other. It would always be like two of us and then there would be the third peacekeeper, the mediator. That'd be like, stop being I'm like this. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, you know what? I think that's what I want for us. And we had another baby. So that we were really maxed out here. And that's one of the reasons that we had to initiate the move. Thank you, dad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So in terms of all of these moments of stress, losing a loved one is incredibly stressful, moving, having a new baby, you're incredibly successful on TikTok and with your business practice. What is your go-to practice? How do you maintain that Libra balance and keep that intuition flowing and the manifestation coming? So a daily practice for me is meditation. I am a transcendental meditator, tm.org, if anybody wants to learn more about it. I've been practicing for over 17 years now for a very long time. And it's pretty simple. You meditate for 20 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes in the evening. And that changes everything. (laughs) It allows you to have this period of rest and just for you to really center yourself amongst all the chaos that's happening. And it allows you to really come and interact with the world in a responsive manner rather than in a reactionary manner. And that's why a lot of times when people say like, how do you do all the stuff you do? I'm like, it's because I meditate. I can guarantee you because I know the way that I was prior to me starting meditation and I know the way that I am now. And although I've always taken on a lot in my life, I do it a lot better now. It's a lot more smoother. There's a lot less anxiety associated with it and things really unfold. Also, the thing is when you're a regular meditator, it's almost as if you think of a car driving down like a muddy road and it's raining and there's like mud that's like coming up on your windshield and it's hard to see. Meditation is that windshield wiper that just goes this and cleans your window a little bit so you can see for a little further. And then guess what? The next day, more mud is coming on your window and then you meditate and you can have a little bit of a vision of your path forward. And that's exactly what meditation is. So it's not about just doing it once and saying, I meditated on Tuesday and (laughs) I'll do it again next year kind of thing. It's not, that's not where the benefit is. The benefit is in the regular practice of it because you're really like building that muscle. You're attuning yourself to really have that vision and that clarity for your life moving forward. Yeah. And I notice too, and I often say this to my clients, if you don't have 20 minutes to meditate at least once a day, then you need to do it for two hours. (laughs) (laughs) It's like you, you need it double time. And yeah. I know I practiced meditation. TM was the very first technique that I began to study. And that was way back in the Mm seventies. And yes, but I didn't stick with that method because for me, I don't know. I I see TM, a lot of people just leave their body and maybe that's one way to quiet the mind. But for now, I like a grounding meditation. And certainly, like you said, there's so many, there's hundreds of thousands and probably people, I think the best suggestion is finding something that resonates with you and stick with it. As you said, you stuck with yours. It works for you. I've got mine that works. And yeah, it's it's profound. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. It makes a difference. And I know know that there's never like a one thing that's going to give you the solution for everybody. So I always say, hey, I think meditation works, right? But there's so many different varieties and styles to it. You really have to just explore and see what's going to be the best for you. So to the people that say, oh, I tried, it doesn't work. Yeah, it works. It's just a matter of finding the right approach or the right technique, right? 
Yeah. And then also just a little bit of commitment and creating routine around it and really scheduling it. I find works very well for me. I have it in my phone as an alarm that goes off twice a day. And yeah, there's plenty of days that I say, okay, I snooze it and I'll do it later. I'll do it later kind of thing, but I still get it done. So it's still in existence for me to do. And it's just always in that space of being a reminder. And the other thing is like, when you meditate, you have to remember, like, you're not meditating to get good at meditation. You're meditating to get good at life. That's what it really shifts for you. It shifts the way that you show up in the world. And it's so profound. I I really want to encourage people to stick with it. If you do nothing else, right? If you do no other practice, explore meditation. You don't have to start with 20 minutes either, because I think that sometimes people find it very difficult to sit for 20 minutes. Yeah. Sit for five. Yeah. If yeah. that's to go sit for two and then work your way up, really be in that space of training yourself into expanding and growing yourself. And to love yourself. That's self a form of self-love. You're putting yourself Absolutely. first in the day and, or at least committing to it on that day in that calendar space. Very mm-hmm. important. What is the most significant benefit that you believe you are receiving as a result of meditation? The most significant. Oh, I think that all the benefits are significant, but I would say just to be centered in the space of everything else that's happening is profound. Also just to feel much more relaxed, to just be able to show up in the world the way that I want to show up and not be victim as victim to the variables that are happening. And also I found that meditation on a regular basis has given me like an even kill an understanding of my emotions rather than these extremes, right? These ups and downs when something happens, flying off the handle, stuff like that. Nope. When you're, you're, not a, you're not a crazy TikTok mom, huh? <laughs> I, I don't know. No, I don't think so. But <laughs> you know what I mean? You're able to maintain healthy emotional balance. Yeah. Yes, for sure. And just being able to, like I said, just being able to respond to the world rather than coming at the world from this wounded space, but being able to see things for what they are and just being able to see things as they are, but also as like a variety of viewpoints. I think that's also really shifted for me through meditation, understanding that I can be wrong and that's okay. I don't have to always be right. It's almost like my ego has taken a backseat. Now, does your husband meditate? He does. Uh And your kids? They do. They're very young, but they'll sit for a few minutes. There's different techniques that we do with them. And yeah, there's a book that we love. It's called Breathe Like a Bear. And it has mindfulness and meditation techniques for little ones. And we'll do things like it's imagine you have a cup of hot cocoa. You breathe in, you breathe out. Like you're blowing the the hot cocoa kind of thing. And I just, I love that. And it's very interactive and it teaches them without it being like very grown up and strict and kind of thing. And it's beautiful. Also children learn from what they see, right? So when they see their parents meditating, when they see us taking time for ourselves to be mindful, to journal, to read our favorite books, to take extra time for ourselves, they see that's okay. There's so many times when my daughter has said, I need some time for myself, mom. I said, okay. And how she's, old is she? She's five going on six now. Oh yeah. <laughs> going yeah. on 22. <laughs> Or when my son will do something very particular and just say, this is what I've created. This is something that I've put together and I I really love it. And a lot of times I feel like he's learned that because like we will show him that's what it is. Every time I write a book or I create something, I'll show it to the family and I'll say, Hey, this is what I've been working on. and, And I really love it. My favorite thing about it is this. And I know that this is the impact it's going to have in the world. So when he creates things, whether it's a block tower or a car he's built out of paper tubes or whatever the case is, he does the same thing. And I love that because he's learning how to love what he creates before he even says what it could matter to anyone else. And I think a lot of times we're so caught up in the space of, oh man, if I create this, how are other people going to react to it? Rather than saying, I'm creating this and this is the impact it's going to have on the world. This is what I love about it. And then putting it out into the world. So I've noticed these shifts within my children. Wonder, that's really wonderful. But I also feel like it's trusting your intuition, listening to that little inner voice to then create something and have the, the enough self-love and confidence to be able to bring it forth and share it. Yes, for sure. With a generous heart. Yeah. So what are some of the tools that you incorporate to enhance, let's say, your creativity or your intuition? Meditation is a big one. 
Right. Um, so we're back to meditation. That is, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love well, it. Back to square I, one. Yeah, and I always want to share that because I say in my with my creativity, having that time to be centered shifts everything, right? So that allows you to have that restful space so that innovation and that creativity can actually blossom and grow. When you don't allow that for yourself, when you're always constantly in the go-go, when you're not resting and caring for yourself in whatever way that might look like, or having that downtime to daydream, to take a nap, to just be in this restful state and that stillness, you don't have that time for your brain to say, oh, this is the space that I can be creative in. So a lot comes through in meditation. I'd also say doing grounding work has been very helpful for me in centering myself and managing emotions and being feeling very connected to the world, right? Those are two very big practices for me. I also do a lot of like prayer and pujas and stuff like that. Just culturally, that's always been integrated into my life. I grew up in a very traditional Indian household. So it's always been just part of how we do things. Wonderful, wonderful. Great, having a great example or your whole family environment is so supportive. It encourages and fosters healthy, good habits. Yeah. With working with your coaching clients and manifestation, are there specific tools in addition to meditation or grounding that you incorporate in your work? Oh yeah, absolutely. And working with each client is completely customized, right? right. Because each client's at a different space. Everybody has a different interaction with their limiting beliefs or what's holding them back. And when you work with me, that's exactly the stuff that we move through. We're working through those limiting beliefs. We're creating new beliefs for you. We're shifting your mental paradigm so that your life can show up differently and that you can show up differently in your life. When you have an, a sense of how confident you are, you're going to approach a situation much differently than if you walk into it feeling unconfident, unprepared. And it's really doing that work that starts to change things. And I've seen my clients have profound results in their life in just the matter of a couple of months. And time again, I hear people say, I dealt with this for seven years and I can't believe that I'm it's gone for me now. And I don't have this thought. I've wanted to get to this goal for X amount of time. I've always had it on my vision board and I never thought I would get here and I'm here. Whether it's becoming a published author, whether it's sailing around the world, whether it's deciding to create a family, finding a loved one, fi finding your ideal partner, your love in your life, creating that partnership, that relationship, manifesting money. Like, I, what I teach is just like to empower people when it comes down to it, right? If I had to boil it down to anything, it's truly to empower people to understand how powerful they are so that they can go out and create literally anything that they want in their life. There's no limitations. Yeah. It's stepping into the truth of who we are mm -hmm. and learning how to work with science, with energy. Tell us a little bit about yourself working with science. Sure. Yeah, I have, I'm a big science nerd. <laughs> so, <laughs> I actually have a degree in biology and psychology, as well as pre-medicine. And I went to medical school. I know many people might not know this about me. And I ended up leaving in my last year of medical school because I didn't feel like it was in alignment with what I wanted to create. Wow how I wanted to help people. That's uh, a big step because most cute. people end up <laughs> following and just completing it because they started it or because it, you're from an Indian family that being a doctor is like the dream of every Indian family, right? To have a son oh, yeah. or daughter. Yeah. And I have two siblings and both of them are doctors. So yeah. Just, so that's the family. The one. Yeah. It's an en <laughs> engineer, doctor, or what? A chief financial yeah. officer or something. Yeah. Like or engineer. Yep. Yeah, something yeah. like that. And yeah, it was a big decision. And I knew in my heart that it wasn't the right path for me for so long, but I so wanted to make my parents proud, right? And uh -huh. I just knew that like, my life path was to help people. I knew that intuitively. I knew it from a very young age. Of self. So when I shared this with my parents, they were like, great, become a doctor. That's how you can help people. <laughs> <Which is not laughs> wrong. There, there's truth to that, but uh -huh. it was a little bit of misalignment there. And I left in my last year, not really knowing what the heck I was going to do. I didn't have a plan B. I didn't have anything. I just left. And I ended up on a farm in Arizona as a woofer, which is a part of a volunteer program in which you can go and work on a, an organic farm and you learn about farming and they let you stay there and they feed you essentially for free. And I uh, did that for a little bit. And then I decided, okay, I'm going to move back to New York. And I went back to New York and decided to learn more about yoga traditionally and meditation. And I decided to become a health coach. And then it was within a few months that I decided to start my coaching business. And from there, things just like slowly evolved. 
I actually have gone on to, to earn a master's degree in Ayurvedic science and integrative medicine, just out of curiosity. I just love to learn. And right now I'm actually contemplating starting a PhD in mind, body science and psychology. So it's just like constantly being in this space of wanting to learn more, wanting to learn more about the brain and how our own thoughts impact our lives. And the psychology of that is so beautiful. I'm actually in the process of reading a really good book. It's by Tara Swartz and it's called The Source. It's beautiful. I want to say a beautiful like compendium of science and psychology and manifestation coming together to just the way that she speaks about manifesting with this ability to integrate science and neuroscience into it is just very beautiful. So anyone that's interested, I would encourage you to go see that book, read it. And how about your book? Where can people get your book? Sure. Yeah. You can get my book in any major real realtors. You can get my book at any major stores, any big box stores, they have them. You can also find it online at Amazon, of course, Barnes and Nobles, Target, it's pretty much everywhere. It's worldwide and both of them are available. Oh, the you know what? Actually, my first book now is also available at Five Below and I'm so excited about it because it gets into the hands of so many more people. So if you have a Five Below store near you, go and check it out. It is five bucks there, which is also a really great deal. I'm trying to see if I have it here so I can show you guys. Well, and your book name is Shadow Work Journal for Self-Love. Powerful so that, prompts. That's this one. This is the newest one, right? It's a shadow work journal for self-love. And it has a lot of powerful prompts and exercises to integrate your shadow and embrace your inner child. I actually, I co-authored this with one of my good friends, Valerie Inez. And it's, it was like such a beautiful process of healing to write this book. Cause we started writing this. I think it was the week or two after my father had passed. So I was going through it. You were in it. I was, yeah, I was in it. And she was in the process of going through a divorce on her end. And it was just like, we were both <laughs> deep within Miser- our shadows. Miserable. <laughs> yeah. But what came out of it was just so profound, so beautiful. Talk, talk about being in the flow and allowing those creative juices, even when you're stuck in the quagmire of the worst stuff possible that we think that can be happening. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of, a lot that whole experience was so beautiful in a way, because as our shadows were coming up, as we were dealing with grief and all of these different things, we were able to put all of the stuff that we talk about in the book to practice. Right. So there was a lot of times when we would do the exercises and I would be like, I love this exercise, but I hate this one. Let's not include it. Very we were just like, yeah. We're not going to use this. So I feel like what ended up being distilled and used in this book is so beautiful and it's so powerful. Oh, that's just amazing. I'm so proud of you. And I'm just so honored to sit here and have this conversation because I know that there's a lot of people out there struggling right now. I know a lot of people not only overwhelm if they're busy professionals, but a lot of times if you're caught up in the professional corporate or even as an entrepreneur, sometimes we aren't, we don't have permission to talk about a lot of these things. We want to keep it under wraps and just keep up the tough face and bravado and just keep fighting, doing the good fight. Right. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people wear those masks on their social media. It's like oh, not everybody's as comfortable in the camera and exposing their whole family as you are. Lata. Mm-hmm. Good job. Good job. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And speaking of gifts, well, let's talk about your free gift that you're offering our listeners today. Yes. My free offer is the mindfulness and scheduling workbook. It's all about creating time in your life, especially for busy professionals that have a lot going on. Scheduling is so important. And I just put together this free workbook. I think that it can be very beneficial for you. Thank you. Thank you for that. And I'm sure it's time tested (laughs) with with your expertise at balancing all the activities that you've got in your life. So that's Mm -hmm. awesome. Thank you so much. So Lata, would you have any words of wisdom as we come to a close here that you would share what you've learned maybe about manifestation or are trusting your intuition for our listeners? Sure. About trusting your intuition for sure. Trusting your intuition is so powerful. And the more that you do it, the stronger your intuition gets. It is, it's like a muscle. So the more that you're actually using your intuition and allowing it to guide you, the more it's being worked out and the more confident you become in it. So if you are looking to strengthen your intuition, that's one way to powerfully do that. Another thing about manifesting is just know that when you are truly aligned and in your truth, you can manifest anything. 
One of the big things about manifestation is really being an aligned action. And that's not just action, right? It's not just doing things, but it's really doing things in a poignant way that's moving you towards a goal in particular. So if it's if it looks like you getting a job that's paying you more money than your current job, and that's what you're truly working towards and manifesting, maybe an aligned action towards that is cleaning up your resume. Maybe aligned action is going to some networking events to talk about, talk to people that are in that profession or applying for different jobs that are closer to what it is that you do want. So being aligned action is very powerful. And then the last thing I want to leave people with is I want to encourage everybody to really increase kindness in their life to themselves and to others. I feel like that is so important. When we are kinder to the world, there's more kindness out there for us to experience, for our family to enjoy, for just to exist. And I think that really shifts things on a global scale. So I want to encourage everyone to do something kind. That's so beautiful and so simple, isn't it? And just leading with our heart and getting out of our ego and our intellect. Yeah. So thank you. That is profound. I so appreciate you. Thank you for being here and sharing your wisdom and all of your amazing talents and insights. So thank you so much for having me. It was just great. It was great talking with you. I just hope we can do this again. It's been a delight. So everybody, thank you so much for watching this incredible interview with Lata. Go ahead and click that link so you don't miss out on her free gift. And I'll look forward to seeing you on the next interview.